Good morning, brothers, sisters, and friends, and welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Central Christian Church. These past few months have proven to be very event-worthy. You know, events beyond our control have affected every aspect of each of our lives. Even within Singapore, in the last two weeks, we're adjusting to phase two of Singapore's reopening, as well as to the news that we'll be having general elections in just two weeks. It seems that every so often, we need to keep on adjusting to ever-changing circumstances. In the month of June, we've been revisiting our church's 2020 theme of partnership in Christ. In our partnership with Christ, we can be assured that even if the circumstances around us keep on changing, our Lord will never change. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is an unchanging rock on whom we can be assured we can place our full trust. Today, we'll be hearing some more sharing about how the previous quiet time in May has been helpful for one sister. We'll be hearing Richard Chong preach the word of God about how God intends for everything to be for our own good. Let's pray to have an amazing service today. If you can, please join with me and go to God and bow our knees in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God and Father, we thank you so much, God, that you are our ever unchanging God. You are the everlasting God. Father, we can place our full trust in you. Father, you are amazing. Your love for us is more amazing than we can ever imagine. And that's why, Father, in your seeking of a relationship with us, Father, we can afford to just give our full heart, our full faith to you. We pray, Lord, today that our hearts will be open, that our worship will be pleasing to you. Please be with us as we go to worship you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we have Marvin and Kim lead us in worship with the song, Lord, Reign in Me, I'd like to read a passage. In Romans chapter 5, verse 21, it says, Just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, God reigns over all creation, over all the earth. But the one place he has allowed us to control is our own hearts. But when this happens, all too often, sin reigns in our life and results in death. Let us sing this song and joyfully ask God to reign in our lives again with grace and righteousness. Lord, reign in me again. Brothers and sisters, let us all stand.
Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay An essential part of our faith is our knowledge of God's Word, the Bible. For the month of July, we'll be deepening our knowledge of the Bible by, as a whole church, going through the book of John together as our quiet time. To inspire us to get ready for this quiet time series, we'll interview Jessica Mack, who was moved and inspired by the previous quiet time series that we did on the book of Mark. Jessica is a mom of two school-going girls, and she's a freelance designer. She was baptized as a teen and has gone through many highs and lows in life, but Jessica has always based her conviction upon God's word. Let's hear from her. Hi everyone, I'm here with Jessica today from the Parents Ministry, and I'll be asking her some questions on the Quiet Time series on the Book of Mark. Hi Jessica. You've been a disciple for over 20 years, since your teenage years. I'm sure you've read the book of Mark many times. So I just wanted to ask, how has the recent book of Mark Quiet Time series been helpful for your understanding of Jesus and the Bible? Um, yeah, I must say that it has been really very enlightening and encouraging Quiet Time series for me. Yes, it's true, being in church for so long, it's easy to think that I knew it all, but I'm humbled by the things that I've been learning in Mark. The question posted also helped me to look deeper in my heart, ask myself the toughest questions. This round, I told myself to really embrace and dig deeper. I really enjoy reading the account of Jesus, the parables accompanied with some research found online, as well as a book that I'm reading about the cross. I must say that all these have brought me back to the cross and reminded me of why I've decided to be a disciple. Um, one of the studies I have learned more in depth 
It's about the people whom Jesus appeared to after his resurrection. This study amazes me quite a lot. I must say that I'm heartened to know Jesus first appeared to a woman, Mary Magdalene. Thereafter, the many instances, he appeared to many, to Peter, the 11, where he spoke about the Great Commission, the 500. To me, these are like literally the last words of Jesus. So it makes a lot of sense to know what he wants to tell us. Reading each encounter of his appearance has given me deeper insights, convictions, and greater meaning about the cross. Thank you for sharing this. I do admire your learner's heart in learning not just from the Quiet Time series, but you also accompanied it with online research and also a book on the cross and deepening your understanding on the cross even after being so many years as a disciple. The second question that I have for you is, since phase two has opened up, how do you see yourself in Christ's desire and plan to spread the good news? Well, on the first day of phase two, I was delighted that I finally get to have breakfast with my neighbors who I'm reaching out to. I still definitely prefer to meet face to face. Over this period, we have had Bible studies, baking Bible talks over Zoom, which we plan to continue even moving ahead. So being able to meet and catch up with friends surely enable me to build closer connections with them. It will also be easier to reach out to the less fortunate and needy during this time. It's so cool to be doing that with your neighbor on the first day of phase two. And I do appreciate your heart for thinking about reaching out to the less fortunate in Singapore during this period of time. With that said, what challenges do you foresee yourself be facing in phase two? Well, I think in terms of mission, like having Bible talks to reach out to friends, it is always easier to meet up physically. And the limitations to the number of people gathered are still very small. Thus, the challenge, I guess, is to create, to continue to create a plan uh, of interesting events online, which many of us are still trying to get used to. Yes, I do understand and agree with you that there are so many limitations what we can do with Zoom. But let's not let this be a factor for us to stop reaching out to our friends through Bible Talk. Jessica, it was so nice having you here with us today. And thank you so much for sharing with us all that you've learned from the Book of Mark. It's time for us to go now. Bye! Bye! Today, for the sermon, we'll be hearing from Richard Chong. Richard and his wife, Serena, they led the mission team planting for the Penang Church. And he was also the leader of the youth ministry when my wife, Angelia, was baptized there as a teen about three or four years ago. Richard is a minister who has so much heart for so many different kinds of people. On the one hand, he runs a prison ministry for inmates. On the other hand, he regularly studies the Bible with young teens. In addition, he currently leads the Young Parents Ministry. Brothers and sisters, I present to you Richard Chong. Good morning, brothers and sisters and friends. Thank you for joining us in our Sunday online service. My name is Richard. Since this is the month of June, where should you be if it's not for the COVID-19 situation? Will you be in New Zealand snowboarding? Or how about just grabbing shopping bags from the malls in Bangkok, Thailand? Well, it's a very special month. And we know there's a reason why. Let me update you what I did during this month of June. Yes, I picked up the new skill. My son and I whip up a storm for the family. These are the dishes that we did for the family. And not only that, we also did exercise together with some of the brothers on Wednesday. And we Zoom a lot just to keep up with one another. If I were to tell you that you'll be on June vacation, and that's what you do for the whole month, what would you say? You'll say, what a disaster. Well, today, we're going to learn from a man from the Bible, that's Joseph. His life is nothing short of drama, murder plots, heart-wrenching scenes and nail-biting parts, and a big warm reunion. As many would say, it's very like Korean drama. If you will be in his shoes, you would say it's disastrous, the kind of life that he led. 
we begin with the scene how he was very much loved by his father. Let's read Genesis chapter 37, beginning verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had born to him in his old age, when he made an honoured robe for him. In chapter 37, verse 18, But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Who are the people? They are the brothers. Later, instead of just loving Joseph, the brothers got jealous of Joseph. What they did, instead of killing Joseph, they sold him as slave, and Joseph landed up in Potiphar's house. He became the main housekeeper, the captain of the guard's house. Let's read on. In Genesis 39, verse 17, when he was tempted and accused by Potiphar's wife of taking advantage of her sexually. And then, in chapter 40, verse 23, he was thrown into prison for making a stand to be righteous. Yet many times he helped others, but out of trouble, just like the baker and the cup bearer. Yet he was forgotten. That's the life of Joseph. In Genesis chapter 41, verse 46, Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He was serving the king, the most powerful king then in the known world. This was what Joseph had to go through. Almost murdered, sold as slaves, then being thrown into prison and then rise to the occasion. At the age of 17, he was sold as slaves for 11 years. At 28, he went to prison for two years. At the age of 30, he was made overseer of the whole of Egypt. He was 39 years old when his brothers just came to Egypt. His youth was gone, being a slave. His prime adulthood was almost gone serving and being in prison. And almost his whole adolescence and young adulthood was without the love of his family and away from them. If this is the story of your life, how will your life end up? In greatness, regret, or bitterness? Let's look at how Joseph sees all this hardship and events in his life. After 22 years later, meeting those brothers that plotted to kill him and ended up selling him as slave, he summarized his life in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. And it reads, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. What Joseph meant was, you think it was your idea that you choose to kill me and yet sold me as a slave, but actually it was God's plan. My first point, intended for good to accomplish. It is amazing to see how Joseph ended up seeing God working in partnership with him for greater good. So often I do not see things that happen in my life just as what Joseph said, intended for good to accomplish. When bad things happen, instead of seeing what is intended for good to accomplish, do you see yourself as a victim or a tool used by God? I think at some point of Joseph's life, he must have struggled to understand all the injustice and the bad things that happened to him. I'm sure he must have doubted and angry with God. I think I will be just like any one of us. Yet, amazingly, Joseph did not feel this way. In Genesis chapter 39, verse 20 to 21, it says, But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him, and he showered him kindness and granted him favour in the eyes of of the prison warden. I think at, certain po at some point in Joseph's life, Joseph must have thought and think hard about the hardship. And yet, he saw God working through his life. And because of the presence of God, it encourages him. Growing up, I was raised in the 
town infested with crimes and surrounded by gangs. I came from a low-income family with my dad being a carpenter. We were always tied with finances. My childhood friends were either gang members or drug addicts. I remember somehow God would bring someone to lead me to go to church. As a young boy, I wasn't inter interested in school and decided to join the Navy. Life was tough because it was filled with loneliness and sin. As a young man, I kept thinking and blaming God why life is so hard and tough, and I do not see myself and the future that's ahead of me. Many times I hated God because He made my life so tough. Three times I thought of ending my life, and the first two years of my training especially was very difficult. But amazingly, I had friends in the Navy introduce me to the Bible again. But as much as I know about the Bible, I would argue with my friends about the existence of God. It was not until two of my notorious friends who were my partners in crime had a radical change in their lives. They no longer had all their vices, but they become sane and proper. Freddie and Kenny introduced me to the church and I got a new lease of life. Now I finally understood why I had to go to the Navy, which was not my career choice in the first place. Many years later, a friend of mine introduced me to volunteer as a counsellor for young offenders. It took me a while to respond to the offer. Today, I volunteer my services as a counsellor in the prisons and can relate to many of the young inmates with their troubled lives. Because of what I went through as a youth, I can now empathise with the pain they are going through. It is very real for me, talking to them, and I'm able to connect with their loneliness, loss and pain. Now I know that my life is intended for good to accomplish. What about you today? What do you see in your life? Do you see God is still at work with you? When things are looking bleak and gloom, do you see that God is still working in your life? Do you believe that what you're going through is intended for good to accomplish? Many of us want to be used by God or live according to His purpose, yet we refuse to go through what He placed in our lives. When bad things come along, we can either walk away and be bitter, or choose to think that it is intended for good to accomplish in our lives. Today, please make a decision to think about that. My second point is a funny question. Am I in the place of God? Let's follow along and see what happens after Joseph reunited with the brothers. Now the brothers were very insecure because the way they treated him years ago. Let's read in chapter 50, verse 16 to 19. So they sent word to Joseph saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins, the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God, your father. When their message came to Joseph, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Interestingly, the brothers thought that the forgiveness that came from Joseph was because their father, Joseph. So, if the father is dead, then Joseph will hold no bars and go full out for revenge. Yet alarmingly, Joseph said, Am I in the place of God? Basically, he was saying, I'm not God. Or who am I to act like God to punish you? It's amazing how Joseph replied and summarized his life. Joseph went the extra mile to show true forgiveness and humility. Let's read on Genesis chapter 50, verse 21. So now, do not be afraid. I'll provide for you and support you and your little ones. So he comforted them, giving them encouragement and hope, and spoke with kindness to their hearts. Joseph managed to find true humility by speaking to his brothers. With that humility, he was able to show compassion and pity. He even went on to connect with them and felt their insecurity and fears. And he knew what they were thinking. He met their needs and promised to take care of them. Not just them, but their whole household. What a heart. 
What is so amazing about Joseph is that he did not learn all this from the laws or commandments because it was after him that Moses got all the commandments from God. He kept himself pure and away from sin, not because he learned it from someone else, but he got it through humility and through righteousness by knowing God and his relationship with God. How is your relationship with God lately? Do you get the message from God to let go and let Him steer you to the right course of direction? Yes, the direction to humility. We may not explicitly say that I'm in the place of God, but when we take things into our own hands, when we fight for our own rights and demand justice, are we not trying to occupy the space or the place of God? If we want to have God's position as judge and jury, then why don't we also take God's position of grace and forgiveness? God is both just as well as merciful. Why will God give us justice when we refuse to be merciful? Basically, you can't have it both ways. Taking God's position to demand justice, put in our hearts, take Satan's position or unforgiveness and show no grace. Joseph understand truly God is the judge and he's the only one that could punish and judge. I also learned through the years of being a disciple, I can slowly replace the importance of the word of God with my own emotions. I know I had become prideful and let my feelings or emotions take the place of the Bible. And so often, I let my emotions run high rather than the Word of God. I remember there was a time a brother had that I dearly loved said something not very nice to me and that triggered me badly. I know what he said was half-truths, but instead of seeing what was true, I began to have an attitude towards him. I began to think that I've, I've been doing so much for him and yet this is what I get. I would do an, anything just to help him. And yet, I was being treated unfairly. The whole day, my mind was just filled with so much of anger. My mind kept repeating, I cannot believe that he's a believer and he behaved like this. He's not acting like Christ. I cannot forgive him for doing this. It went on and on. Then I realized what I was saying. I was more upset with what he did than my own personal righteousness. I was focusing on what he should be doing rather than my own personal righteousness and repenting of my own sin. This verse caught my attention. Luke chapter 6, beginning verse 41. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? It was a rude awakening. Brothers and sisters, how about you? Do you see your own personal righteousness as pleasing to God? Or do we see someone else unrighteousness? Today, I see the benefits of letting God take center stage in my life. I also ask myself this consistently. Am I God? Only God can judge and punish. I can choose only to forgive and to be at peace. Today, do you go by just how you feel in making certain judgment? Does it matter to you what God thinks? Take some time this week to look at Joseph's life. See how he puts priority in responding to God's plan. It is the middle of the year and it's good for us to take stock where we are now and start looking at what we can change before the end of the year. Today we look at the phrase and a question intended for good to accomplish your life and mine. Is it intended for good to accomplish? Ask yourself this question. Think about your life. And ask this question, am I God? Definitely we are not. Then let God steer us to righteousness. Thank you so much for your attention and God bless. Thank you, Richard, for your sermon today. You know, I'm so convicted about how God does everything for our own good. And yet, I often try to play the role of God and want to control everything in my life. Thanks be to God that He allowed His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to 
die on a cross so that I won't be controlled or enslaved by sin. Let us pray for the bread and the wine. God, thank you so much that you love us, yet you give us free will. You are willing to let us go, Father, because you love us, knowing that you can redeem us through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's only through him that we can be freed. Father, we pray for the bread and the wine. We thank you for the bread that symbolizes the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, broken on the cross for us. And the wine that symbolizes his blood poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's right now meditate on the cross. Brothers, sisters, and friends, now is the time for the collection of the poor contribution. The church, we take up this collection for the poor and we help it to take care of those who are disadvantaged in our society. We distribute it according to the chart that will be shown later on. Let us give to the poor because our Lord in heaven, he wants us to also have his same heart of love for others as well. Friends, you're not obliged to give, but if you do, we are so grateful for your contribution. Sometimes I feel that I could fight an army with just me and you And there's no one could harm me Oh, but sometimes I can feel a little shy Is that I need to know that you are there, that's why Be with me, Lord Be with me, Lord Be with me, Lord
Thank you so much for joining us for today's service. Right now, let's have a time for some announcements. First, we'll be having an online workshop next Saturday on the 4th of July. The title of the workshop is Discipleship 2020. The workshop webinar starts at 3 p.m. We'll first have Budi Hartono, who leads the Jakarta Church, do the first keynote speech, followed by our own John Lewis with the second part of the sermon. After a break at 4.30 p.m., we'll have the second part of the workshop. There will be five classes being offered at the same time, and you can choose from one of these classes. First, one another. One another relationships will be taught by Richard and Serena Chong together with Anthony Chan. Second class is creating community by Stephen and Agnes Tan together with Angelia Poa. Third class, leading Bible studies and Bible discussion by Poa He and Miao Xiang. Fourth, deeper quiet times by John Lewis. And the fifth and final class is current issues by Karen Lewis and Chen Yan. The registration link for the webinar will be sent out to everyone, as well as the individual links for each of the breakout sessions. Each class has a limit of 300 participants, and it will be on a first-come, first-served basis. Our next announcement is regarding the I Choose Us Marriage Workshop, which we'll be having at the end of the month. We'll be hosting this virtual workshop over a period of three days. It starts on the 24th of July, Friday at 8 p.m. with Choose Love and Respect. The second session will be on Saturday, 3 p.m., which is Choose Awareness. The third and final session will be on Sunday at 3 p.m., Choose Connection. Our Sunday service that day will run at the usual time at 11 a.m. The registration link for this marriage webinar will be out this week for you to register as well as for you to invite your friends too. Do note that this webinar will be for Singaporean residents only. The final announcement is regarding our Quiet Time series for July. The Quiet Time series will be on the book of John and it will be sent out on soft copy and sent to you through your WhatsApp Bible Talk chat groups and it'll be done by Tuesday so that all of us can start together the quiet time on Wednesday the 1st of July. The series will also be available for download from our website centralchristianchurch.sg. That's all for today. Stay safe and goodbye and God bless.